Just a morning shout out from a hot white auntie to your podcast. <laughs> I'm up for glory holes and hair transplant action. I could be the oldest puma to ever hit you guys up, which I'm damn proud of. I'll call Nigel Bisha and everything and choke him the fuck out. Oh my god. And then she left her Facebook name. You, I go into her feed and it's just four pictures. One is of a cat. Cute. Yeah. And three of them are fucking giant tarantulas. <laughs> Shout out to our sponsor, ExpressVPN. One of the best ways to keep your online browsing activity private is by using ExpressVPN. So protect your privacy today and get three months of ExpressVPN for free. Visit expressvpn.com slash Haya. That's H-A-I-Y-A-A to learn more. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Easy and affordable online therapy. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash Haya today to get 10% off your first month. That's better, H-E-L-P.com slash H-A-I-Y-A-A. Welcome back, listeners, to Haya Pod. And big news, finally, my Canadian visa has gotten approved. Woo! Yes. Play the sound effect, monkey boy. Yes. <laughs> no, thank you, Matt. Thank you. It's been seven months. It, it, Ukraine is now Russia. And finally, my visa is here. Seven months. That's insane. Crazy. I bitch about the British work ethic, but the Canadian work ethic is even worse. But I finally have it. Uh, apologies, people. I had to reschedule Copenhagen and Oslo. I was supposed to be there last weekend. So that was a bit sad. Didn't get to yeah. do it. But I, that this means I can now perform in Canada. I also had to uh, reschedule Canada, right? So what dates are you doing in Canada? I don't remember now, but <laughs> producer Matt is coming yes. to Toronto. I can't wait. That's going to be amazing. Have you been to Toronto? No, never. Okay. That's going to be cool. And it's like a place that isn't known for its sex tourism. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm really happy to go to like a nice wholesome place. I'm sure we'll find something for you <laughs> yeah. if we work really hard. If we put our heads together, we can find some Toronto whorehouse. Leave a comment, listeners. If you're from Toronto, <laughs> leave a comment where I should bring producer Matt because he loves the massage parlors, the whorehouses. He's going to be in Amsterdam with me next week. Yeah. You know, we're going to go get a, uh, go visit a nice restaurant, smoke some weed, fuck some whores. <laughs> you know, you're moving out of London soon. So we got to get you, you know, starting a family in Dorset. Yeah. We got to get it out your system. <laughs> oh my get God. the whore fucking out your system. You know, before you get your kid, once you get your kid, <laughs> if you get caught visiting a whorehouse, and you have children. That's even worse. If you get yeah. caught now, you can be like, oh yeah, this is a funny thing. My, my, my podcast host just brought me there. Right, Gemma? <laughs> it's a last holiday, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but if you have so children, what yeah. are you going to do? Leave them in the pram <laughs> as you go fuck a whore? <laughs> a sex worker, sorry. I need to be politically correct. As you go <laughs> bag a sex worker. You know, if you transact with a sex worker and then you leave a child outside in the car. So you got to get out of your system. I'm just, I'm just doing this for you. Thank you. Oh, Matt. that's so kind. I'm bringing you to a whorehouse in Amsterdam. You heard it here first, folks. Gemma said to me, she's like, right, my, my one rule is you can either joke about doing all that shit or you actually do it. One or the other. She said, you can't do both. And I was like, I would rather joke about it. I do not want to do these salacious things. What an idiot. <laughs> Your wife is that you fuck a hooker and you're like, uh, actually, I would just rather joke about it. I, I don't think she wants me to fuck a hooker. I think she, in her mind, would be like, oh yeah, if you go to like a strip club or something, not fuck a hooker. I think you need to clarify with her. <laughs> yeah. I think marriage is about communication. Yeah. And uh, I don't don't take advice from someone who's divorced. <laughs> 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 Marriage is about communication, and you need to ask Gemma to clarify. Okay. Hey, honey, when you say I could either joke about it or actually visit it, what what do you mean exactly? <laughs> what do you mean by visiting? What does visiting entail? Can I partake in on the action? Okay, we won't do anything you're uncomfortable with, you know, or whatever I should say to make this not sexual assault at the <laughs> workplace. Um, aren't you glad Matt is a guy? You know, can you imagine if Matt were a woman? You're like, hey, come to the whorehouse with me. Or else, you know, people be like, the power dynamic. Yeah. Only happens when it's a woman. The double standard. Nobody's brought up the term power dynamic because Matt is a guy. 
Also, we were See? thinking about filming the podcast, like getting you a suite or something. That would be even worse. Like, yeah, we're, gonna, oh, yeah. <laughs> we're just going to film in my suite today. Come around six. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get me too. Yeah, yeah. But nobody cares enough about Matt no, to me to me. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> but if Matt were a hot young woman, people would come at me like, oh, you're using your power dynamic. <laughs> your power dynamic. I love that term, power dynamic. I got, I got a little bit of a criticism on YouTube comments when I filmed a video with Esther. Oh, no. And they were like, oh, I can't believe he's making all these flirtatious comments at her and then using his power dynamic and threatening her career. I'm like... Threatening her career? Yeah, like, sh- I'm the one who needs the career boost. <laughs> Esther is like a famous chef in yeah. America. She doesn't need to be in this video. And yeah. we also know each other outside of this. And we planned this. Yeah. Okay. I, I told her we're gonna say some salacious shit and you know, make it gossipy and trashy and you know yeah. flirty and she loves it and she was pr- and you also you could also see her like hitting back yeah you know no it's it's like funny chemistry you're you're both playing that role exactly you know I mean. yeah but because producer Matt is a guy very <laughs> smart hiring decisions on my part thank fuck but anyways this weekend because I didn't have the gigs mm. uh again I communicated on Twitter and Instagram but some people still showed up to the gig and then oh. i got like angry dms i'm like what more do you want me to do the venue has emailed you yeah. i have tweeted and instagram storied and what 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 do you want me to do just write a letter to you <laughs> right so I, I was in the here over the weekend and i knew matt producer matt you were going to a music festival yeah so i was thinking to myself you know why not try something that i don't usually try always do the things that scare you right because i need content i need to do shit in my life <laughs> so i can talk about it on the pod and, and here's a problem too. I realize when I'm in London, I'm really happy. I have my routine. My, my yeah. diet's good. My workout three times a week. I'm relaxed. My house is nice. I enjoy it. I mean, just spending the night in, having a glass of wine, watching Succession. <laughs> Wonderful night in. Meet with friends. I'm so happy. But the content sucks balls. There's nothing I can talk about. Every Monday, I'm scrambling. What can I say? What can I say? <laughs> but then when I'm traveling... I'm yeah. miserable, it's busy as shit, I'm stressed, my eczema's flaring up. But then we have great stories. You meet interesting characters. Yeah, we meet like uh, arms dealers and uh, we go to brothels and get Thai massages. <laughs> Amazing. So what what's the solution here? I have to be miserable to make good videos. That's yeah. the, the, the curse of being an artist. I was just about to say to make good art. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, otherwise your life is comfort is, isn't great. You would have been very miserable at the festival, though, if you turned up. Yeah, I, I asked I asked Matt, so can I just... Okay, naively, I thought, oh, just drive there. <laughs> hang out for an afternoon. It's like a three-hour drive. Oh, shit. Yeah. Where was it? In Dorset. Fuck, man. Yeah, like in the countryside. How many people showed up? Uh, Like 15,000, something like that. The fuck? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's like a, it's a proper festival. It's a big thing. And they make it so hard for people to just spend an afternoon there. Can yeah. that be a, a music festival that's just, just an afternoon? So I can just pop in, pop out like, like it's a shopping trip, you know? <laughs> <laughs> can, can you make a music festival feel more like Harrods? <laughs> if you don't know, listeners, Harrods is like uh, a posh oh, shopping, yeah. uh, like, what do you call like it? A department, department store. store. But they should make the music experience more like that, you know? Because I, I, want, I texted Matt. Would it work if I just uh, drove there for an afternoon and drove back? And like, would they let me in? Is there even parking there? Uh, yes, there is parking. Okay, it's in a field. But, but it would have been a pain I, if I showed I love up. The, and Nigel's texting me. It's so like if I just showed up in my Tesla. I'm like, what's the car got to do with anything? I didn't understand <laughs> why you were doing what that um, London guy did to you, the Essex guy. It's like just show up in my Tesla. It's like, no. yeah, Nigel, I've seen your car. Like, no, the thing is, I don't want people to. Some music festivals they yeah. don't like these kinds of cars. <laughs> you know, Tesla is like a tech guy. Some yeah. music festivals don't like the tech people. Yeah, that's Aww. why. That's why I mentioned it. I was like, will I be like ostracized? Will they egg my car? <laughs> is it like a very hippy dippy music festival? Oh, I mean, it is that. Yeah. Okay, they probably yeah, it hate is. it. That's why I love. If he did show up and like do like a secret set or something, turn up, say a load of offensive shit, and then just leave. <laughs> <laughs> yep. See ya. <laughs> That's what I should have done. Yeah. You know, I should have done a set there. But, but dude, you would have been so stressed. Like, uh, yes, yeah, so I got your text. Mm-hmm. It took me three hours to get a signal to like send one back. 
you would have been stressed. Do they out. do that on purpose? Because the artists don't want people recording their sets. No, I think it's because you can still record it. I guess you can't stream it. But um, no, it's because there's so many people in an area that's not used to having that many people trying oh, to access Jesus. 3G or 4G. Reminds me of Carnival. Notting Hill Carnival. Did you see I've never TikToks? done that. Yeah, yeah, I did see. Carnival is like this, uh, every year in London, they have this, is it a Caribbean festival? Uh, I, I wouldn't want to label it, but yeah. sure. It's like Matt a... gets nervous because it's a, black, <laughs> it's a black thing. See how nervous white people get when it's on the outside of their culture. I just don't want to say I get it you know. wrong. That's, I'm not nervous. Just get it wrong. Who cares? You're not racist. By, to, to, like, by getting it wrong doesn't mean you're racist. Yeah, you true. know, I think it's yeah, Caribbean thing. I think. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's a black thing. They're all the same. Oh African Caribbean. Just eat your jollof rice, people. Oh. <laughs> oh. Kidding, kidding, oh. kidding. If I haven't gotten cancelled from the sexual harassment comment, this will cancel me. But they were crazy, man. It was just a, a million and a half people or something, just all squashing that zone. Yeah. But, I digress. Basically, I spent this weekend in London, right? They didn't get to go to the music festival, which is a good thing. Matt took three hours to reply. And then he was like, oh, I don't know. It might not be worth it because it's a three-day pass. It all sold out. Yeah, literally. And also, uh, uh, guys, I should say, um, if I agree with any weird shit today, it's because my brain is operating, operating at like 20%. I, I drove back today and I got here and I said to Nigel instantly, oh, can I please have an Americano? Oh. I need to like... Wake up and be, because I need to be alert whenever I'm around you. Because you say so much, I don't want to be there, like, smiling and going <laughs> along with it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, I just thought I'd get that as, like, a public service announcement. Continue. We are going to cut all that out. <laughs> we're going to cut all that out. And then we're going to cheat the footage. So, we'll get, we'll just chop out a part where Matt's nodding. And then... Overlay it when I say crazy yeah. shit. Well, you're like, it's just a black thing. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> yeah. it is. <laughs> um, you woke up. You, you told me you didn't sleep a lot because you you had to sleep in a tent, right? Yeah. So these music festivals, it's one of those refugee experiences. And then, come on, do oh, the dude. nod thing. Do the nod. <laughs> yeah, refugees. Yeah. You Because we were staying in the VIP bit, good friend of ours mm -hmm. who we went with. And has worked it a bunch of times. So he got us into where the owner is in, in that camp. It's like, you can't even access it from the main bit. Oh. The point I'm making with this is even there, that there are toilets and showers. I went to go to the toilet and it like all overflowed everywhere. It was the most disgusting thing I've ever oh. seen. And like, then it's like bleach. the VIP and section. And this is the VIP <laughs> section. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I wouldn't want to go show up with my nice shoes, my suede <laughs> shoes, <laughs> my chuckas, my Chelsea boots. Terrible. You know, the, the <laughs> irony is, in, in London, and you walk around middle class areas, they always have like a Ukraine flag outside their yeah. house, a Ukraine sticker. But the only time they feel like a refugee is when they go to music festivals, <laughs> you know? Do you meet a Ukrainian person and be like, I, I know how you feel. I, I know exactly how you feel. I've been to end of the road music festival. <laughs> so I get the feelings of displacement, you know? When Russia dropped that bomb in Kiev, it oh reminds me of Glastonbury 2018. Just stop. It just, <laughs> we couldn't find a toilet. I was in the VIP section, but the toilet was still overflowing. I had to wade through a puddle of my own shit. <laughs> did you have to do that too, Ivan? You did? I understand. Fuck Putin. I stand with Ukraine. Amazing. <laughs> Great. You, I mean, you would have loved the the music and he had like comedy and films and all of that stuff, but they like the camping <laughs> side of it. I can't imagine. Have you been camping before? No, yeah, I have no I interest. I can't imagine you camping. I, no, actually I have been camping. Really? In uh, Utah, in Moab, the desert. Oh, cool. In America. I nice. have. I, I liked it. Was it glamping or was it camping? It was camping, camping. Oh, it was camping. Okay. It got so cold at night. And uh, I was with my ex-wife at the time. You know, we yeah. fucked in a tent. It was nice. <laughs> It was nice. It was very quiet though. Not that any of us asked. Okay, great. I mean, I'm trying to, I need, you know, that's how I make conversation. Okay. Yeah. Everybody's wondering. Yeah. That's the next question, right? It begs the question. Yeah. I was there waiting. You're just fucking was, a twin. It was on the tip of my tongue. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And my Instagram whore fans want to know. My Instagram hoes. They probably do want to know too. Because fair. we'll read a few yeah. later in the episode. Keep listening, guys. We'll, we'll read a few DMs from some <laughs> cool Instagram hoes. Uh, because ever since I mentioned I met up with one Instagram hoe last episode, the floodgates <laughs> are now open. 
And people from everywhere in the world is like, oh, can I be your second Instagram ho? <laughs> and I'm very flattered. And we, we found some really funny ones. We'll read it out later. You're going to have to take me on full time to deal with that because that's like another job in itself. <laughs> I'm going to stop reading them because it's too much. I can't deal with it. You secretly enjoy it. <laughs> you secretly enjoy what, living it. Living vicariously for you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad I didn't show up to the music festival. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't do a show there. I'll just go up there and bitch about the whole festival. You know, <laughs> you guys like this shit. You, you would. You know, it was very cute. I'll put some like photos and things so people can see both sides. Because sure, I'm making it sound like it was a horrible thing, but it was really cute. And this, you would have liked the stage. It was in the woods, like in the forest. Okay, it was magical. If they could make that stage happen, but with all the amenities of modern life, then maybe I'll like it. <laughs> If I, there's a hotel nearby, it's like at least four stars. You were just hoping it's like, it's Hampstead Heath sort of thing. Yes. <laughs> and you can just Hampstead go home Heath. after. Yeah. And then there's a Soho house nearby. <laughs> and then you have to pay to get into a specific place with like nice air, air conditioned tents, glamping. Oh, <laughs> nice. So anyways, I had to stay in here uh, over in London in the weekend. And I had to, I had a, a two pairs of trousers that I needed altered. Okay. I needed to take, uh, shorten them. These are my problems. So I went to the uh, the, the local t the town center nearby where I live, right? Yep. And then they, they had three... I had to go to three dry cleaners to find someone who would fucking shorten my trousers. <laughs> you think that's the easiest thing to do, <laughs> right? The first one I went into, uh, there, there was a dry cleaner. They had a sign outside. Same day alterations and repair services. I was like, oh, amazing. Same day. Wow. In Britain? <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> And then I went in, guess what? The tailor is only in there Monday to Thursday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Good for them. Yeah, fuck that. What do you mean Three good for them? Three hours a day. <laughs> it's like, how do you expect people to show up? Three hours a day. And then you say same day alteration. You need to at least put a big asterisk. <laughs> yeah. Next week, same day alteration if you arrive here in the three hour yeah. window. And then the second place I went to, I went in there, they're open, so yep. that was great. I went in there, I asked them, do you do alterations? They said, yes. And I brought down my trousers. I was like, okay, I got two pairs of trousers. I need shortened a little bit. Yep. And then the guy said, how much do you want them shortened by? And I said, uh, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure. Let me try them on and you can pin it for me. And then he said, oh, we don't have that service here. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, he said, oh, no, you can't change here. We don't have a mirror and a place for you to change. <laughs> and I just looked at him and I was like, um, what? <laughs> you don't have a curtain and a mirror? I just need to change into this thing that yeah. needs altering. Yeah. <laughs> he said, no, sorry, we don't do that. Sorry about that. I said, do you have a bathroom? <laughs> I would change to the bathroom and walk out and you can pin it. Yeah. I see the woman, like, they're probably a husband and wife operation. The woman is just there sewing. I see her on a, a sewing machine. I'm like, please, just let me give you business. Yeah. I'll take your bathroom. I'll change in the bathroom. And he said, Could no, you, 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 can't, you can't change in the bathroom. We don't have, we don't have a bathroom here. I like how he said, <laughs> you can't change in the bathroom. And then we don't have a bathroom here. It's like, oh, I caught you in a lie. Yeah. And then there was like, and then we just had to stare at each other for five seconds in silence. Because in my head, I'm like, I, I see a solution here. Yeah. I'm proposing solutions for you <laughs> to take my money and you're just not taking any of the solutions I'm providing. He just keeps apologizing. He's like, stop apologizing. Just, just let me change. Yeah. I'll do it here. Fuck it. Just, just put on something and <laughs> I'll change behind the washing machine. Well, that's why I was, couldn't you just do it there? Like, if, you're, said, if you're comfortable with it, surely it's about you, not them. He said, no, no, you, you can't change here. What you have to do, he said this, what you have to do is you, you go home and then you fold up the trousers, and then you bring the trousers in folded up, and then we can uh, we can me measure it for you then. It's like, I'm not gonna do that. One, how do you fold out your own trousers when you're wearing them? <laughs> to check for the right length. I'm wearing them, like, how? Also, they're the expert, right? Yeah, <laughs> I can't really see. And two, so what, I have to walk home, and fold them up, and then carry the trousers carefully? <laughs> gingerly carry my trousers so the fold doesn't unfold in the wind. Yep. Is that what I'm supposed to do? And he said, yeah. <laughs> and I'm just... I'm just Go there on, mate. in disbelief. 
just staring at this guy. There was it's like a sitcom scene. I'm just staring at him. He's staring <laughs> at me back. We're just quiet, and then I just shook my head and left because I know if I stayed there any longer, I'll just start being a dick because it's so absurd and stupid. I would just I would start going like, why? <laughs> why can't I fucking change your bathroom? It's right there. Where do you pee? Tell me where you pee. I'll go in there for two minutes. Okay? They're the same trousers. <laughs> it's 30 pounds worth of business. And you're just turning it down. And he has a nerve to be like, in the beginning, I asked him, how long does it take to yeah. uh, turn around uh, shortening your trousers? He said, oh yeah, you bring it in in the morning, I get it to you by the evening. <laughs> that level of confidence and that, no, you, but you can't change here. You have to bring it in in the morning, freshly pinned by yourself. What what is this? What is is this a lazy thing or, or is this a I can't problem solve thing or what is the I hate money thing? What is this? <laughs> what is this? It's fifteen pounds to to alter a pair of trousers and just and it's very easy if you if yep. you can sew. It's like a five minute ten minute job, and you just turn down twenty minutes of work for thirty pounds, and just turn it down because you what you That's... can't put a curtain up. Somewhere. What? What is this? Is it a common thing in the UK? Where they don't let you change in the dry cleaners? I've never known that. No. That, that is, does seem strange. You would... I, I was stunned. I was like, what the f... I can't believe it. I'm like, am I dreaming or something? Somebody pinch me. The level of... I don't even know what to call it. Is it stupidity? It's not even stupidity. What? What is it? It's just incompetence, I think. Yeah. But that is incompetent for a tailor to not have a mirror. I'm sorry. Yeah. Or the lack of common sense. Yeah. yeah you don't yeah. even need a mirror. You just need, just like put a little rail on the wall, yeah. hang a curtain so yeah. someone can go into that little, little like, curtain room and change and then you don't need a mirror. The, the tailor can just kind of pin it up for you. Yeah, but surely you would want to see yourself in the mirror though, right? Or is that a luxury in this, oh, yeah. in, 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 in this respect? I In the UK, I expect <laughs> the bare minimum. <laughs> if you have a mirror, I'm like, that is above and beyond. That is a stretch goal. For a tailor to have a mirror in the UK, <laughs> that is a stretch goal. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a changing area, yeah. not even a room. I'm not <laughs> even looking for a room. If you have a changing cubicle, all right? Yeah. You can, you can just re refer to, you know, this 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 port portable yeah. toilet. If you have a changing portable toilet where I can change in, that is what I'm expect, expecting from UK tailors now. That's madness. So it crazy. sounds like you're describing for people who don't like live in the UK, like a little village somewhere like miles away in the middle of no, nowhere. This it's is London. central London. <laughs> okay, maybe not central central. Yeah, but, but it's like, like it's yeah, yeah. Great, greater London then. Yes, it's London. It's crazy. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's London. How do you, you know you are a central financial capital of the world, right? I mean, one, one of the few. I begrudgingly have to admit that. <laughs> Why begrudgingly? Because you have, you have you have the city, the bankers, and then you have this fucking dry cleaner operator who can't set up a changing room. In Asia, if I ran a dry cleaner, I did have yeah. a changing room. I would just make one up. I'll call the, the yeah. restaurant next door. Hey, can we borrow like a little room just because I have a client here? I would just do anything to to get the business. Yep. Yeah. Meanwhile, here he just yeah. apologizes. I'm like, can you stop apologizing and and problem solve <laughs> can you just try to fix this instead of just saying sorry sorry <laughs> that attitude that's why i don't like when british people apologize it's just yeah. like yeah, yeah i don't give a shit it just means i don't care you've told me sorry. off for apologizing before and i do care that's i don't I know say. man i think sometimes i want to lump you in the dry cleaner guy <laughs> <laughs> sometimes i want to put you both in a whatsapp group hey matt meet dry cleaner guy <laughs> It's like, when they say sorry here, they're not like apologetic. They're just like, ah, fuck off. Sorry <laughs> means fuck off here. Sorry means fuck off. Leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> so listeners, if you ever come to the UK, people say sorry. Don't think they're yeah. being apologetic. It means it is what it is. It's yeah. Just like, shrug, uh, shrug. <laughs> yeah, tough luck. Tough luck, brother. So what did you? So come on, we need to have a conclusion to the story. Did so you, we did just you sort stared at each other for five seconds, and I shook my head and left. Yeah, and I had to walk to a third dry cleaner. And fortunately, she wasn't British. I think she was Greek or something. Okay, she had everything open late, 
two day turnaround. Yeah. Works every day, Monday to Saturday. Has a changing room yeah. that is literally <laughs> just a curtain mounted on a railing and a mirror. Oh, amazing! I'm like, oh, look at this immigrant experience. They 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 problem solve. So the one before were they British? I I, I they had a British accent. I'm okay. gonna assume, <laughs> but for this for the purpose of the story, let's make them British. Yeah, it makes, okay. It makes my narrative more compelling. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> what if I said he was black? How would you react? <laughs> oh, my How would you react, Matt? But, uh, um, uh, uh, I, I, I don't think it's fair. That, uh, Just doing you, their best. Yeah. Like, <laughs> sometimes they have a really hard life. They 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 don't have curtains where they come from. Maybe it's part of the culture to not have curtains. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, did, did you see curtains and teepees? No, 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 no curtains and teepees. You know, just just oh, maybe God. maybe it's bad feng shui for them to have mirrors in a dry cleaner. You know, you ever think about that? <laughs> no, they're not black, fortunately. So we can. Uh, what do you mean, fortunately? <laughs> Fortunately Say. for this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now I sound like a racist. Yeah. Fortunately, my neighborhood drag cleaners are not black. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Listen. Listen. You can be any color you want. As long as you have a fucking mirror and a changing area. Please. You can be a like a I don't know. Oh half black, half Chinese lesbian non-binary person as long as you can fix my trousers i i'm cool with you but it's, it's insane this is this is what i deal with every day in britain every every now and then you just run into these really frustrating things where people yeah. just apologize to you but there is no solution to be found i've had this with like delivery stuff with house stuff oh don't say, even get me you, started you must have had it with house, the house stuff. stuff oh my god one 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 time i was waiting for a part to be delivered for the shower right and then you know what the, the guy said, the supplier said, so uh, your part is here. It's in my shop. But when they delivered, they deliver, um, the, uh, the manufacturer delivered a whole pallet of stuff, but it didn't deliver the manifest for the pallet. So I don't exactly know what's in it, but I know your stuff is in it. Uh. But because I don't have the manifest de detailing what's in it, I can't open it to check if it's in it. <laughs> and then it's just this, like, what would you do? What would you I you, think instead of telling you all of that, I don't know. There, there's a solution there. You shouldn't have to come up with a solution. Uh, that that seems like I, I want to say just just fucking top. open the fucking pallet. <laughs> I will come there and open the pallet for you. What do you say to these people? And you, and you don't want to lose your temper on the phone because no. nobody likes that. And then if I lose, I lost my temper before, and I always felt shitty afterwards. Yep. And then now I'm feeling shitty <laughs> because somebody's incompetent. <laughs> The craziness. And then I feel shitty because I lost my temper. And I'm like, did I lose my temper? Because I think I'm, oh, some sort of celebrity now. And I feel entitled <laughs> to getting things whenever I want at the instant I want it. And then I'm like, no, <laughs> that guy fucked up. <laughs> that guy just gaslit me into thinking I'm a dick. But the reality is <laughs> a sane human being would be annoyed too. You'd be annoyed, right? If you couldn't change. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. So that's, that's my dry cleaner story. What do you think, <laughs> listeners? Have you experienced something like this? And also, bear in mind, I just came from Tokyo. Just came from <laughs> Singapore, where shit works, and they have take pride in their work, and they accommodate you, and they do a good job, and they're fast. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get that here. I arrive here. Uh, sorry. No mirror. No curtain. Sorry. That's why I never want to get a PA. Oh, because if okay. I get a PA, I won't have these stories. <laughs> My PA will be the one who should start the podcast. <laughs> because he or she will be the yeah. one bringing my trousers to be altered. And then they will run into these things. That would be so fun, though. It could be like a PA segment each week. It'd be like, what's happened this week? And they can tell you about, yeah, tailoring or whatever they, you'll no, be getting them to do. They won't have the colorful detail. PAs are not storytellers, okay? That's a generalization. They, you could find one that is a storyteller. Nah. I, 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 <laughs> hiring a British PA, if they can do the one job well, I'm happy. Please. 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 I, I, have, I know better now than to ask a British person to multitask. I have been burned so many times. <laughs> British people are like iPhones. There's no multitasking. You have to close out the other apps. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> but yeah, 
So that's why I never want to get a PA. Is these minor annoyances that get me going, and then it generates good content. <laughs> and it'll probably become a stand-up routine in the near future. I have to remember, man. I think one of the jobs I'll have you do is when I'm putting together a new hour, yeah. I want you to comb through every episode and, and look at the time codes because Matt leaves very detailed time codes. <laughs> and then you can write down what's a potential joke. So in the future, when I next year, yeah. in February, after my tour is over, you can write down dry cleaner story. And I'll be like, ah, oh, yeah, that could be something I talk about on stage. You know? <laughs> The craziness. And see somebody somebody left a comment saying I'm turning to the Asian Larry yeah. David. And I'm like, yeah, this is <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's cool, right? I'm evolving as a comic. He's bold, so maybe you shouldn't get hey, the hair hey, transplant. Hey. <laughs> Just saying, maybe you should get the hair transplant. And Larry David's doing okay. He's worth like four hundred million dollars or something. That's true. Now a word from our sponsor, better help. So uh, this time they, they sent me the little uh, ad read thing. They wanted to put it in my own words. And cool. guess what they sent me? It said, talk about a time you got stuck focusing on problems instead of solutions. <laughs> you know who should focus more on solutions? Is British laundromat guy. <laughs> I need to tell him to use better help because that guy needs therapy, boy. <laughs> that guy goes to a therapist and then I think the therapist needs to go like, when you, when you apologize to people, do you feel that absolves you of your personal responsibility? <laughs> How does it make you feel when you apologize? Why do you apologize so much? Is it because when you're growing up, your parents never apologized to you? Or because they use the same tactic as you? You go to your mom and you're like, mom, I'm hungry, can I have some food? And mom's like, sorry. <laughs> sorry, we don't have food here, sorry. Mom, what, what do you mean you don't have food? The, food? the grocery store is down the street. Just just get the food there. I see the, the solution. Sorry, we just do that here. We just don't do that here in this house. We don't do food. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, we don't do food. <laughs> oh, man. So maybe that's why yeah. the guy is the way he is. So I, I'm saying he needs therapy. He needs to like reflect and maybe therapy can help him find the root cause of his lack of problem-solving skills in his life. <laughs> And with better help, he could do it from the his company. Com yeah, he from, could from do it the, in the laundromat. Yeah. Maybe maybe they'll make him build like a curtain so he can have <laughs> make like a therapy booth or something. You'll be like, but there's a curtain right there. It's like, no, that's for therapy. That's, yeah. that's not for this. <laughs> there's no mirror in there. That's not for you to change. <laughs> I have used better help before. It's very useful because you can do it anywhere in the world. And they have licensed therapists, not just in the US. Everybody thinks it's just a US thing. They have licensed therapists from the UK, from Singapore, everywhere in the world. Are, they're doing really well. They're very successful. And they're all professional therapists, qualified at everything. It's not just me. It's not just you FaceTiming your friend and bitching about your boy problems. Okay? <laughs> And you, you have taken therapy with BetterHelp too, right? How's that, how's that going? Uh, yeah, it's going really well. It's just a nice bit of time to yourself to reflect. Yeah. And, you know, I can get all my frustration out. Oh, Nigel's working me too hard. I'm becoming a workaholic. All these, <laughs> these are not problems, man. Yeah. <laughs> these are not problems. <laughs> but you don't need, basically, what I'm saying is, you don't need for your life to be falling apart to get therapy. No, no, no. They can just talk about random shit. You know, and because BetterHelp is so affordable, you just talk about random shit. It's like the same as like going to the gym or something, but it's for your upstairs, not yes, for your abs. Exactly. Although both are important. <laughs> and hair transplants is a, it's a good. It's not a it's not a substitute for therapy. Okay, <laughs> I know I've said it, it was before in the previous episode, but I you know different sponsor, different day, <laughs> different sponsor, different narrative, different things I'm saying to get money. <laughs> So get the hair transplant along with therapy, with BetterHelp. You can even use BetterHelp as you're getting the transplant because you can do it over the internet. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash Haya today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash Haya. Haya spelled H-A-I-Y-A-A. ExpressVPN! I'm so glad we got them on the pod because they sponsor a lot of my Uncle Roger videos. Oh, nice yeah. crossover. Yeah, That's cute. finally. What took you so long, ExpressVPN? <laughs> and everybody knows security online is an issue. Uh, we all watch porn, right? And would you know that some porn sites, a lot of porn sites are blocked in Asia. In Malaysia, we block a lot of porn sites. Do they? It's real. 
Okay. So how I do you think I watch it. porn in Malaysia? It's with ExpressVPN. <laughs> porn and BBC iPlayer. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's not just that. Even if you don't watch porn, there's a lot of government surveillance. All right? They track your location, your movement, your internet activity. You don't want to be caught. You know, whatever shit you're looking for online, I don't want to know. But you need ExpressVPN to protect yourself. Yeah. I use it a lot. You get like more shows on Netflix, a thousand, thousands more different shows on Netflix. And of course, every country, if you have like the, the digital version of your TV stuff, like BBC iPlayer, yeah. ITV stuff, uh, I know it's very archaic, but countries licensing law. So this, is, this helps you get around it. Or sometimes YouTube videos are geographically restricted. Like yep. last week tonight, I don't think you can watch it in, in, in the UK. So you have to like switch it to America and you can watch it. Right? It's amazing for um, sports as well. I use it a lot for sport. If you're, if, if you're on holiday or something ah, and you want to watch your favorite that. team, do you know what I mean? And, and you can't access it on their TV or whatever. It, it's really good for that. Yeah. And sometimes it, it's, it's, it's so affordable and it's so nice to use. And sometimes, I, I even hear you can get like cheap plane tickets by changing your location when you're buying the plane ticket from. Oh. Yeah. I never tried it myself, but I hear you can do this. That's very clever. Yeah, yeah I know. Cool. And I even have certain like uh, financial platforms like online banking, where yep. if you're not logging in from the UK, they start getting suspicious. So I use that for you know accessing my online banking as well. Basically, I use ExpressVPN. I have the product. I use it. I pay for it. Uh, I have a discount code because you know I I plug my own thing, but I use it <laughs> and I highly recommend it. I, I wouldn't plug something I don't recommend to people. So the fact that I've worked with done so many videos now, it's a good sign. They're very fast. Uh, no problem so far. The connecting takes like two seconds and it's one button click. So easy. So protect your privacy today and get three months of ExpressVPN for free. Visit expressvpn.com slash Haya. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash H-A-I-Y-A-A for three months free with a one-year package. Visit expressvpn.com slash Haya to learn more. Thanks to these two sponsors, we can finally cover all our uh, demonetized episodes and we can fly Matt out to Amsterdam to look at some hoes. Back to the show. Update on the hair transplant, people. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still gonna do it. Um, but I've decided to change the doctor because the, my, my previous, the previous clinic I went to, there were a few red flags. I could feel yourself um, getting cold feet while we were talking about it last week. You're like, yeah, and I haven't, I haven't actually done a lot of research on this yeah, guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I've, since then, I've been doing a lot of research. So yeah. the red flags I found is um, you show up to the clinic and... So you, you first meet a consultant, not not a doctor. Yeah. So they just tell you, they walk you through the process, which is fine. But ideally, you want to see the doctor, mm. and ideally, it's the same doctor who's going to operate on you. Yeah. So they they had to like run around to get a doctor, and they got one, and the doctor just talked to me. It was all good. But then I called them back a couple of days later, and I was like, oh, it's a different doctor who's going to operate on you. And I and then I asked them, okay, because you have a, a lot of before after photos on your on your website, but it belongs to the clinic, right? Mm. So can I have before after photos of that particular doctor? Yep. And it didn't get back to me for the whole weekend, two days. Like thir- I think I called them on Wednesday or Thursday. It didn't yep. get back to me. So uh, this morning I called them to cancel that one. So it, that, to me, that is that is red flag. And also I did a lot more research and I looked at before and after photos and their hairlines were not very natural, not as natural as I wanted it to be. Mm. You know, some people like, I think maybe it's aesthetics and personal taste too. Some people want a very aggressive hairline, like straight. <laughs> like the Lego man sort of thing. Yeah, I think, it, I, I don't know. Maybe it, some people like that look, you know, uh, but I, that's not for me. So I, I found a doctor who does more natural hairlines. That's good. And I went to a consultation today and uh, it was good. I bu- booked it in for September 30th. Hopefully I can do it. I think... Because this doctor wants to do a better job, they will have to shave me down the sides and the back. They have to shave it down a little bit. So I'll have to wear like a fade for a little bit. I can't wait. Uh, I can't wait. <laughs> it's terrible though. You're going to be so down with the kids. Like, uh, you're going to look cool. You should no. get like a Nike tick in the back or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. It'll be good. No. You, you, might, you might really suit it. I don't think it works with the Uncle Roger character. It's no. too clean and But maybe you just have to like get Uncle Roger a hat or something. Yeah, I'll, I'll pre-film the videos. <laughs> for the podcast, it's fine. But for the Uncle Roger videos, yeah. the character needs to can't look too slick yeah. and, you know, fade. Uncle Roger can't look like a fuckboy, you yeah. know? <laughs> Uncle, Roger, Uncle Roger can't look like he vapes. <laughs> you know, people, a lot of them, have, they, they like like uh, 
vaping, people with fades and vaping, is there a correlation yeah. there? <laughs> because I always associate people who just blow smoke out and they always have a very cool fade. Maybe, maybe it's a London thing. I don't know. <laughs> but so this doctor, and I'm gonna show this uh, on pictures on the podcast. He drew like the he had like, showed me a lot of like more a lot more care and attention. He drew yeah. the little line on my head uh, to show like p- a potential hairline. So you can see it's it's very subtle lowering of the hairline a little bit, but not too much, uh, which I like because I think you you want to be you want to be subtle when it comes to cosmetic surgery. Yeah, you don't yeah, want I, people I to tell you did it. Yeah, you know what I mean. So imagine if I did like a hairline that's down here. <laughs> Yeah, you, you don't want that. <laughs> I just see you got like a different face. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to preserve your original face. I showed him yeah. photos from when I was a teenager and a child. And then he just oh. kind of to preserve that, which is which is good. And I'll feel... That's so cute. I love this. Yeah, he has nice. a lot of attention to detail. A good, yeah, good a doctor. Lot, a lot of care going into it. It's nice. So it may, gave me a lot more uh, confidence. And he has a nice like Instagram that has his before and after patients yeah. that he operated on, not just a clinic. So that's great, and it's, uh, it's, it's very well documented. It feels like it's going to be like a birthing story. What are you going to do if you turn up and it's a different doctor? Are I'll, you gonna I'll freak leave. Out? I'll leave. You know, like some mothers sort of thing. They have like their birthing plan, and when they turn up and they can't do it how they want to, so they freak out. Is that going to be you? Uh, uh, I hope not. I'll keep <laughs> you guys posted. Do you want to be my chaperone? Should you bring a mic or something? I think we should do that. The doctor said. <laughs> um, the doctor said he researched who I was. Oh, cool. So he was like, "So which other clinic did you go to?" Because he saw the podcast <laughs> clip. Oh, it's there. seriously amazing. Yeah, he thought I was a podcaster. He doesn't know the Uncle Roger stuff. Okay, because he cool. kept thinking I'm just a podcaster, yeah. so I didn't, didn't have the heart to tell him. I also shit on your favorite chefs. Is he going to give you a discount? No. Oh, That's okay. another thing. He I quote it was a bit are. pricey. Uh, yeah. It was a bit pricier, which is cool with me because, yeah. you know, I want to do good work, right? But I don't know when it comes to medical stuff in the UK, can you haggle? <laughs> so I was thinking in my head, oh, <laughs> should I ask for a discount? Because I know in, in if it were in Asia, you could probably haggle yeah. a little bit. Maybe Turkey, yes, you could haggle a little bit. But in the UK, and the UK, I feel like you, you can only haggle if it's like a tradesperson. How, I'm just thinking, how can you haggle? Because a lot of the time, if you're buying something like wholesale, then sure, you can do something there. How would you do it with this? It's just like, he gives me a figure. Cheaper. I just go a grand lower and yeah, say, can we do this number? You know? But there's no, like, there's just no negotiation. There. <laughs> you just, just meet like, in the middle. No, can you just do it cheaper? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't want to piss him off and then he like disincentivize him to do a good job. Exactly. Because it is my hair. Yeah. And then because I, I show up like this, you know, my hair today is looking, you know, quite puffy and nice. And then <laughs> I show up to him. He's like, uh, yeah, just so you know, when you do the hair transplant, not people aren't really going to notice because you already have a full head of hair. People oh, are going to be like, oh, nice. you have a full head of hair already. What are you doing here? And then I want, I want to tell him, I didn't have the heart to tell him, like, listen, doc. You think I have a full head of hair. And I mean, it, it is nice if I style it properly, yeah, but sure. um, based on my hairline, it's quite limiting what I can do. I can't really wear my hair up like this. It's just the proportions don't look right. There's just sure. too much forehead here on the side. So I'm just showing showing it to you guys. I you think know? it's fine. Honestly, like I get why you're doing it and mm-hmm. everything, but I, I think you'd be fine if you did that. But Listen. how would you do it? Well, like um, like a man bun or something. Like how would you, what do you mean? or would you just slick it back? They well, why, have when, like when would you ever do band. your hair like, oh, oh, okay. for, for me, personally. Yeah. Like, well, when would you ever style it like that? If or, I want to, you know, it's nice to have the option. <laughs> okay, maybe not like slick it back, but to slick it up. Oh, to get sure. it off the forehead. You're yeah, wear, yeah, when you're wearing yeah, a yeah. suit, you want to look a bit slicker. Yes. And maybe in the future, Uncle Roger will have this haircut and I will have like, you know, a, yeah. a non-covering the forehead haircut. That is, I'm thinking about my career, people. More separation <laughs> between the character and... Also, not yeah. even your career. Like, that's probably quite a healthy thing to do, like psychologically too. Do you know what I mean? So you're not. Always that person. Yes, mental health is important, guys, as we've discussed <laughs> in our ad read. No, but I think it's so good that you're being so open about this whole process because there'll be lots of people who are maybe considering it but are a bit nervous or like intimidated yeah. by the process. So you'll see firsthand what I'm going through. I need the That's content nice. too. I need the content. <laughs> uh, He's not doing it for you guys, he's doing it for him. <laughs> yeah, for the sweet, sweet 25 pounds of ad revenue <laughs> because our episodes always get demonetized when we first upload them and then I have to appeal. And then yeah. when the appeal goes to, oh, congratulations, your video is monetized again. We've we've already got like the majority of like the views. <laughs> you know? So yeah, 25 pounds, 50 pounds of video. So if you, you're you feeling generous, listeners, hit the donate button on YouTube. And if there's a podcast doing really well, then there'll probably be a reason we have to pull it. That's what yeah. normally happens. Yeah. <laughs> hint, 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 episode 32. Uh, <laughs> Oh, we keep listening to the pod and one day we'll clarify everything, okay? 
but we can't. We, we don't want to say anything yet. It's no. too. It's too close. But I'm excited for the for the hair transplant. This doctor seems good, and I show you the photos. Right, I think it does make a difference. You yeah. know, I show you the uh, the line they drew yeah, in yeah, the yeah. photos. It make it makes a difference. Oh, it definitely will make a difference. Yeah, it, it gave me like some nice confidence. And also, what I wanted to say was the doctor thinks I have a full head of hair, and I do. Yes, but I also want to tell the doctor, listen, doc, you're comparing me to like the baldest Englishmen who come in <laughs> here, and they're pretty fucking bald. Okay. <laughs> In a, in the world of Asia, yeah. uh, sure, this is a nice head of hair in the Western world. But if you compare it to like other Asian celebrities and yeah. K-pop stars, they're fucking they're yeah. big locks and everything, man. So unfortunately, I want to be you know part of that world and be big in Asia as well. So the the beauty standards are a little bit different. Yeah. So I gotta gotta maintain that, you know. I think it makes sense. Yeah, but I didn't have the heart to tell him that. You know, <laughs> I just show a picture of BTS and be like, make make me look like them. <laughs> <laughs> but this weekend too, another thing that happened this weekend. My friend from uh, he lives in the Midlands in Dudley came to visit, and he's a he's a good friend, comedian. And we're very, very very close. Some of my better friends out there, you know. It was pre Uncle Roger day, so I know he's not a he's a he's a real guy. He's a uh, day one. Yes, day one guy. You know, so there are two types of people in this world. You know, people I met who know me after Uncle Roger, <laughs> who just want something from me. And then there's day one people, you know? Great. I'm not a leech. And if I am, I'm a nice one. I'm a smiley You leech. leech. Every episode you come, you're, you're paid to be here. <laughs> not a, you're not exactly a leech, but you're paid to be here. So... <laughs> Like, you wouldn't be here if I weren't paying you. You don't, so, you don't know that. Really? But keep paying me. Yeah. <laughs> Can I pay you in hookers instead? Oh, I can't say. How that's many a, times? That's, that's a company bonus. That's a company bonus. You've been doing such a good job, oh. Matt. I want to give you two hookers in Amsterdam. <laughs> but my friend from Dudley, from friend from the Midlands, came down to visit. And he has a new girlfriend now. And he, his girlfriend's vegan. Oh, cool. So now he's become vegan. And at first, I was like, oh, what the fuck, man? The fuck is this shit, bro? Yeah. But then I realized something. I went through, I, we went out to get uh, brunch at a vegan brunch place, which I'm not, I've not been against vegan restaurants. If it's prepared well, it's nice you know, yeah. every now and then. So I went there, and it was nice food. And then we got talking uh, over drinks to talk about veganism. And um, I have a new perspective on it. Okay. You know, so my friend is this, this generic, like, not generic, but like this normal British guy lives in the Midlands. <laughs> generic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, generic British guy. Continue. He just please. came off the assembly line yeah, and yeah. Uh, just straight from the mall and the factory. <laughs> so he he's vegan now. And I see there's a lot of appeal to being vegan in the UK because it means you start caring about what you eat. Mm. That's a shortcut to getting you to care. Because he grew up in the Midlands, he, he doesn't care about food. He just eats shit. Like, in, in Britain, if you're not in London, yeah. you don't really have a lot of good food options. You're not going to have a chance to be a foodie. So what do you eat? Like, Toby Carvery, like, big slabs of meat and gravy. <laughs> meat and gravy. <laughs> I, I did as someone from the North once. Gravy. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm very unattractive. I can't bring you anywhere. For- <laughs> I just sound poor. What are you doing? Oh gravy. Can you bring you to Soul House? I ask, well, can I have uh, picante and gravy? Greve, greve. But that's what he eats, you know? McDonald's, Toby Carvery, Weatherspoons, another pub chain, like shitty food, oh, baked beans, and classic. cheap shit. Yeah. So being vegan is actually good for him because now he has to think. Yep. He goes to a grocery store, he has to think what is vegan. He has to think about what he buys now. Instead of just stopping at a random like pub on by the side of the street and eating there. He has to think, well, this pub has vegan food. Yep. And chances are Restaurants that have a vegan option will be like restaurants that serve better food because they have more thought. They they're catering to a different demographic of audience, people who care about what they eat. So going vegan is actually healthier for him. It's better for him, you know. On the flip side, in Asia, everybody starts out already caring about what they eat. So we don't go vegan. So we hate you if you're vegan. But I can see why in Britain it's actually a good thing. But hopefully. Vegan is just a stepping stone for them to start caring about what they eat and then hopefully they will lose their veganism. Still think about what they eat, but start eating everything. Yeah. Okay. You know? So that's, that's what that's yes. what I think. That's an interesting take. Yeah. It's a new perspective. Yep. I also didn't want to shit on vegans too much because it is it is his girlfriend. I like the girlfriend a lot. Oh. She she's she's good for him. Oh you know? good. So I'm like anything that gets this guy to eat healthier, I'm all for. You know? Because he needs he needs some help <laughs> to eat healthier. <laughs> 
I can't. I can only help so this much. Generic pussy <laughs> is a big motivator. Okay, if you're not eating healthy, date a girl who eats healthy. Yeah, and then you'll just be influenced by her. When you people say don't try to change someone you're dating, I'm like, no, fucking try to change him. Jesus Christ, <laughs> make him better or the, make the woman better too. Ideally, you both change each other. Yeah, don't true. try to yeah. change it. What is this advice? <laughs> So you just date somebody and they're going to still be the same exact person you dated 10 years ago? Wow. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Yeah. You want to change them within reason. If he's abusive, then leave. That, that's not unchangeable. But if it's a small oh diet God. thing, if he hits you, then yeah, not, not changeable. Dating advice from yeah. the divorcee. <laughs> yeah, dating <laughs> advice from the divorce guy. <laughs> if he hits you... um. Try to bring him to better help. Such a low bar. <laughs> so now, listeners, as promised, we're going to read out uh, the best DM I've gotten in a while. Oh, God. So this is... Uh, DMs are open now, guys. If uh, if you want to be one of Nigel's Instagram hosts, I'll... Uh, and also, here's the thing, too. I like <laughs> it when someone's clearly an Instagram ho, so I know what they're after. Oh my you know? God. And it's like you have... It's very clear, like because I'm on Raya, it's very clear who the Instagram hoes are. You know, you yeah. see their Instagram feed is public, okay? And then they have, like, pictures of them on yachts, drinking expensive champagne. And then they have, like, 700 followers and a singer-songwriter. I'm like, you are clearly not successful enough to afford this lifestyle. I know what you're after. <laughs> There's something nice about that. Because sometimes you date someone, mm. and their Instagram feed is not very Instagram hoey. Okay. But then they start, like... Liking stuff that's Instagram hoey, you know, like the champagnes and the yachts and expensive holidays and Marbella and then Mykonos, you know, and then yeah. you're like, are you genuine or are you just a shitty, a shit Instagram hoe? <laughs> an Instagram hoe, an Instagram gold digger is shit at her job and you can't, you're not successful, uh, not a successful gold digger yet, you know, you can't really tell. So it's kind of refreshing sometimes if you meet someone who's a complete, yep, she's a gold digger, you know what you're in for, yeah. take them on a trip. Whatever, fly private once, you know, have a nice time <laughs> and leave. That is nice. That's actually quite refreshing. Okay. And they like the nice things in life, you know. You don't have to bring someone out. And then you you, you tell them like, oh, uh, like say sometimes, sometimes it's nice when I go out and then I, I wear my watch and they're like, oh, that's a nice watch. I'm like, oh, thank you. I, I, don't, I don't, I'm not the guy. I'm not going to be like, Look at my watch, bitch, you know? <laughs> just walking around like But this. sometimes it's nice when they notice things. Instead of them going, oh, I just never really see the point in watches. It just kind of shuts the whole conversation down, doesn't yeah. it? So if it's an Instagram hoe, I'm not going <laughs> to buy you a watch. I'm not, I'm not a simp. Is that where you're there like, how do you feel about designer sandals? And you just get your little H out for your Hermes sandals. Yeah, I wouldn't mention them. Oh, but okay. it's nice when people notice them. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you mention them, it's gauche. It's a bit... Essexy, yes, as you said, very in the last showy. episode. I just like wearing things, and then when people notice, I'm like, ah, you're chic too. <laughs> Shall we get a, go to a cocktail bar? You know. So it's nice when people know their shit. Yeah. But yes, uh, Instagram hoe of the week. That should be a new segment. I was so worried you were gonna say that. <laughs> hoe of the week. God. Is this actually a thing? Instagram ho of the week? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you'll see how we feel next this week. Just... Ho of the week. I want to go back to H- my culture podcast. H O T W. H O. Yeah. Wait. You're going to go into a culture podcast? This is the culture oh. podcast. I'm capturing the zeitgeist. I'd love it one day if this podcast gets big enough. It just trends on Twitter like H O T W. Ho of the week. Of the week. Everybody's sending pictures in. Well, actually, it should be um, N-H-O-T-W, Nigel's Ho of the Week. Uh, so Just so I'm not part of this. <laughs> Whoops, sent my other DM to on the main Nigel Ng Insta, but damn, boy, you've just solidified my attraction to young Chinese boys. I mean men. Men. I'm not a pedophile, mostly. See, she really gets my humor. She really gets my humor. Don't tell my place of employment about this as I need my pension. I'm supposed to be fixing computers right now, but when when do I ever do what I'm supposed to do? Seriously, Phil, thank you for the years of laughter. My elderly mother is so sick of me laughing about the very refreshing pod and my C-drama fixation. So sick that she purchased nothing but unofficial Uncle Roger merch for me last Christmas because she only knows how to use red bubble. Welp, I have a lot of cool orange nightshirts and masks now that misspell hiya. And shout out to Matt, your perfect partner. 
Hey. Yes, I loved Evelyn, but Matt is hilarious. Go, guys. Never give in. And now, this comes the weird part. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was lovely. I was enjoying yeah. that. I was yeah, like, oh, this is cute. I think my last DM was blocked due to spam. Lol, it's not. Anyway, Matt, I know you're the one seeing this. Just a morning shout out from a hot white auntie to your podcast. <laughs> Always been a fan of the pod, but you two have an awesome chemistry. Any video that doesn't get demonetized means you're not doing your job correctly. Okay, I agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I live in the States, so hit me up, Nigel, if you'll be in the same boring-ass state like Nebraska, and I fly out to see the show with my freaking flyer miles, because why the hell not? I'm now stuck in the desert, so I need entertainment. I'm up for glory holes and hair transplant action. Too old to be an Instagram hoe, but I'm an FB hoe, so look me up. <laughs> FB meaning Facebook, I assume, you know, because she's old. Oh, or I like fa- it. FB meaning fuck buddy. No, Facebook. 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 Host. Facebook. Facebook, oh, um, Facebook uh, host. <laughs> it's just your. It's just your aunt on there. It's just your primary school teacher, your mom's friend. I don't know if I want Facebook host, man. You can't bring <laughs> Facebook host to Mikonos. I could be the oldest puma to ever hit you guys up, which I'm damn proud of. I'll call Nigel Bisha and everything and choke him the fuck out. Oh my god! And then she left her Facebook name. And then the crazy thing is, you, I go into her feed, and it's just four pictures. One is of a cat. Cute. Yeah. And three of them are fucking giant tarantulas. <laughs> she loves spiders. On this picture, is a picture of a giant spider in her little glass uh, box. It says, my gorgeous B. <laughs> Bome Mexican Fire Lake. Uh, that's a spider name, I guess. The Mexican Fire Lake. Molting. Oh, God. Watch out for those fangs. JK, she's a sweetheart. Kissing emoji. That is a giant red flag. <laughs> she lives in the desert and she has spiders. I'm not I'm not going to your place, woman. That's pretty badass, though. I'll have to admit. That's like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm looking for Instagram <laughs> hoes. I'm not looking for the next Tiger King, okay? <laughs> this is not Tiger King. I don't want a crazy woman with like, I, do, I, want, I don't want Spider Queen. Okay. <laughs> And then another picture of a t- giant tarantula. This one has fur and it's blue and red. Oh. The, the, the caption is, Ah, sweet Asmodeus, the most beautiful <laughs> of men. And then lips emoji, laughing to crying emoji. No. <laughs> if I go visit you, this is the start of a true crime podcast. 